Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by six. Let me make sure I got my chart up there. Let me get that chart up. There we go. All right, we got the S&Ps negative by six right now, folks. We get the NASDAQ positive by eight. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. Every trading day, you can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So let's kick it off with some crude. Why not, Teddy? Because we love the crude. You've been calling it well, man, for, geez, we're going back, what, four, five, six months at least now. A uh, mm -hmm. little bit of a pullback in crude under 80 bucks, but uh, all things considered, sitting pretty comfortably at about 80 bucks at this point. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what we got going on on crude right now. All right, crude right now, I think you're just in a little cons consolidation holding pattern. That's it. I think it's just a little pause for the cause before the next bull rally happens, without a doubt. That sums it up well, man. That's it. Why not? We'll move yeah. on. Uh, but I yes, agree. So. I mean, it's because people love to talk about it. Today. Let's jump in terms of, oh, man, the pullback, mm -hmm. right? We're down four bucks. We're up four bucks. Um, I got the chart here going back to just mm -hmm. August when we were trading at $61, something like that. Um, and, you know, I deal a lot with Fibonacci numbers, Teddy. I love them. The mm -hmm. 382 is just a healthy pullback, in my opinion. Um, of course, mm -hmm. move, stocks are going to move in that direction occasionally, even within a bull run. And we haven't even come come close to that yet on that one run we had over the period of a couple months, let alone if you start looking at the trends we've had going back even further um, right. in this crude market. Where? Let me ask you this. Where would crude need to go to, to kind of change the landscape potentially of things. Um, because man, I see it all the time now on Facebook, mm -hmm. people, people posting their gas prices. You know, you can't, somebody yesterday posted an $80 fill up for their big Ford Explorer, stuff like that. Um, where where would that market need to go maybe to, to change the tune that we might see lower prices? Um, anything like that on your horizon or what do you look for so, to that market? No, I'm not. I'm not even remotely bearish to oil business, okay. especially with the with the climate right now, with the administration, with what they want to do with the Northeast. Absolutely not. That's only that. That, if anything, is going to just add fuel to the fire to the rally, without a doubt. So cool. I really, truly believe right now it's just a pause for the cause. Look for <clears throat> look to buy in right now. I would say this is a buying opportunity, not a selling opportunity. You know, there's no reason nice. to see even remotely a correction in oil now. Would it would it impact the markets? Absolutely. I mean, the oil market would have to get below 60 before any barometer is even going to start to say, ooh, this might help slow inflation slightly in the present. Not anything that's catching up already. you got to remember, that's the, those, the inflation that's already running into gear right now, a break in oil is not going to put anything, any stop on that. What it may do is slow yeah. down what's going on, you know. Um, but we would yeah. need a significant uh, reversal in oil to get back below fifty, forty-five dollars a barrel for anyone to even say, "Hey, maybe things are starting to, to slow down and balance out." And you got to remember that there's a new floor in oil. Oil can't get below thirty-five, forty bucks a barrel anymore because since they got rid of the pipeline and a bunch of other rules since January twentieth, uh, Warren Buffett is moving all the oil in the country now via railroads. So that is now causing an artificial floor in oil. And until that policy changes, which it's not going to change anytime soon, you're not going to see oil really have a big sell off for quite some time. You know, it's interesting, too. I started thinking about as I'm seeing, you know, more and more people just talking about gas prices and eighty dollars, you know, mm -hmm. to fill up a gas tank. Um, it's remarkable where we've been in terms of when we had the last time that we had crude up at four bucks, you know, or gas prices mm -hmm. up at four bucks, stuff like that. People started getting away from SUVs, right? Well, yes. boy, it's been a long time since that happened, man. I think, and I was just Googling it during the break. Um, and I was like, what car company did it? And I thought it was Ford. And I think it was Ford in 2018. They almost like stopped selling production of passenger cars because they were just making mm -hmm. so much money off trucks. SUVs right. and crossovers. Um, that's got to be a big influence right now, too, man. And everybody loves SUVs, uh, trucks. Yeah. You know, I'm near Central Florida, man. Everybody's got a Ford F-150 pickup truck or something sure. like that to go along with their mm -hmm. Ford Explorer. Um, that's, you know, not enough people talk about it that we kind of got lulled into mm -hmm. thinking. And I, that, you know, and I, it's, it's just interesting, right? That people forget so quickly. They sure. look into these big vehicles that are gas guzzlers. And then right. you say, hey, you know, gas was not going to be two bucks a gallon forever, folks. Right. Um, and that's got to be a big influence as well that's hitting that market sure. as we're all rolling around with those cars. All mm -hmm. right, let's jump to some of the uh, currencies, Teddy. Where okay. do you want to kick things off for currencies? 
All right. Well, we everyone knows that the dollar index is exploding right now. Since we talked even last week and over the past two weeks, the dollar index is now at multi-month highs. We're, we're at the highest point in the dollar index since June of uh, or July of 2020. You know, so that's a big deal right now as far as dollar strength overall. You know, um, there's a yeah. couple markets that aren't that strong or weak against the dollar, but as a whole, the euro has been getting pounded. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, one inflation and two, you got the COVID um, spike that's flaring up in Germany. You know, yeah. the EU is go is going backwards. You know, so does that mean? I mean, now you got to realize too, we're in a weird situation. We have numbers that are higher than a year ago, and we don't have lockdowns. You know, or we have some lockdowns in sure. other places. So the question is, are these, is the narrative going to go back to the way it was and the way they're supporting and they're going to start locking stuff down? So that's very negative for the EU, you know, or are they going to say, hey, we're not going to do what we did the last time. We're going to stay open. You know, either way, I think it's going to be a, a bear for the euro US dollar. It's going to be tough. The pound, because of oil prices, I think is stabilized. It's not going to get hit too much harder. You know, if the bear still um, maintains on the, I look at it right now, the pound's in a correction right now. The euro is in a bear market. You know, um, okay. U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar yen. Remember, you know, I've been bullish this baby for a while. We've had a hell of a rally the past couple of days, you know. Yeah. So and now we're up on but butting up against these new highs, multi-month highs. And I, I see the U.S. dollar yen going to 116. I think we just have a little bit of a pause today because dollar strength has been very strong over the past week and a half, you know, and it's yeah. not because of it's not because of necessarily big news. It's about what's going on on the broader economic state. It's more the macro than the microeconomics going on right now. Yeah, it is interesting, man. I have a friend, one of my best friends lives in Switzerland, and so he's more in touch, mm -hmm. of course, with what's going on in Europe. Um, and he was talking about, uh, he was tweeting out some, some stuff in Austria, man. Austria, you know, part, of course, over mm -hmm. there, they, they, they just got, you know, they're almost, it almost feels like what we were going through you know, whether it was early this year or during the holidays almost in terms mm -hmm. of hospitals filling up, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I. I imagine that's going to have an impact, man, when they have literally right. once you reach that hospital problem in terms of hospitals filling up, mm -hmm. that's where even as a politician, you know, you can't have hospitals filling up and people just mm -hmm. not being able to get regular service for regular type of medical care. Right. Um, it's a bummer it's going on. But, yeah, I, I just it's mm -hmm. surprising, you know, that it continues. Uh, and look at the yeah. U.S. dollar Swiss, too, real quick. Sorry to interject. Sure. Of the European markets. Remember, I've been saying for a while that it's odd that the Swiss has more volatility than the pound and the euro. Look at that bounce that's happened over the past few sessions in the U.S. dollar Swiss. It's like a balloon underwater. So for that currency to be the one with the most volatility and pressure, that's the one that's guiding the direction for the European currencies right now. So weakness in the okay. Swiss definitely is weakness for the euro, for sure. Not necessarily yeah. a pound. Remember, because Brexit happened. You can't always sure. equate the pound with Brexit. And I think that's one of the reasons why the pound is not selling off like the euro, because they're no longer part of the EU. They don't have sure. these problems the EU has. You know, they have their own. I'm not discounting the UK by sure. any means. But their sovereignty and separation and the fact that they don't have to forego resources to flood into multiple other countries um, unless it's on their own, you know, yeah. I mean, Brexit caught a lot of a lot of beef when it happened, mm -hmm. man. But in light of what's going on, I know it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Teddy, still going to 116, baby. <laughs> 116, man. We'll pull it up. Big moves. Teddy, thanks for the conversation, man. We'll talk to you next week. Absolutely. Okay, take care. We'll be right back. Playing a musical instrument, you have to practice.